Hello guys, my name is Kalana Kane, and today I'm going to be giving you a book review on who was Steve Irwin. So this man here, so I've done some research and I've read this book. This man is an absolute genius. Not in like any other way, like knowing what E makes squirrel is, even though that sounds pretty basic, but like he's smart in different ways. He's smart by helping wildlife. And Steve Irwin, I mean, he was a really nature guy. Like, he really just wanted to protect all the animals. Because, like, when he was <clears throat> he was eight and he was going to school, he asked his, his dad told him a story about how they are building a dam. And he was actually living in an RV then. Because they wanted to travel across the country. And this is where he'd be living his next two lives. Not two lives. The next two years of his life which he actually really liked it because they could cook the rv was nice and comfy and cozy and he just really liked it so he was born on february 20th 1962 and he also had a brother but it didn't really include him a lot in this book and his dad's name is bob Irwin. so this family well they were just really calm and as i already started the story but didn't finish it the dam so one day, um, well, his his dad told him the story, and well, Steve Irwin, he wanted to help the crocodiles because his dad has been teaching him how to. <clears throat> well, you might some people who don't know about Steve Irwin that you might think that he catches crocodiles, kills them, and sells them for their skin, but no, Steve Irwin is actually a pretty chill guy. He he doesn't sell the animals, um, he doesn't sell their skin, not the animals, but. He relocates the animals because, as already said, building the dam causes a lot of noise and some explosions even. So, since crocodiles' ears are very sensitive, they move them, um, Steve Irwin moves them far away from that dam so they can't hear the explosions, all the drilling, all the hammering, well, not really hammering, but just all the machinery. Because the sensitive ears cause for loud noises and stuff like that, and, um... Well, crocodiles don't really do that. And also, they had the people who were building the dams. They actually had problems with crocodiles because, well, the reason why it was taking them so long is because all the crocodiles were, like, invading their personal space or, like, their building space and stuff like that. So, Steve Irwin was actually helping the people who were building the dam and the crocodiles at the same time. So, so when he grew up like an adult, he created this park called Briwa, Briwa Reptile Park. And as um, you might have to, to, um, to tell, Steve Irwin is actually Australian, so he speaks in this accent. Like, there's a wild croc, and he actually hosted his own TV show with his wife, but I'll get more into that later. So, um, his father taught him how to catch crocodiles, and really... He's been doing that for a long time, and he also just helped a lot of other animals. He studied about them, like he's carrying this little crocodile. And since he's Australian, he usually calls a lot of things joeys and with a type of accent, but no shame for him, because he's just a really nice and chill guy. So, um, he likes to surf, and it was actually one of his hobbies and sports he did in high school. And he was actually pretty good at it. And that's also before he built a Brie Wall Reptile Park. So Steve Irwin, well, he was really nice with animals. And, um, well, he taught at a, um, he taught at his Brie Wall Reptile Park. He taught about animals. He did some stunts and tricks with crocodiles in, like, a mini stadium. He did live feedings. He fed them, like wild dogs or dead animals and stuff like that so steve Irwin, even though he fed the crocodiles like even though he like he got dead animals which sounds like a little not good steve Irwin was just actually helping doing his business so he marries this girl called um this girl called terry and their first uh daughter was born on July 24th, 1998, was their first child. And well, Steve Irwin, he actually just taught, and he, now I'm going to get into, um, 
Wait, no. First, I'm gonna do... He was an animal lover whose family opened a zoo. And that zoo is actually Breewall Reptile Park. And he actually also had a pet python, which he was a little scared at first, but then he grew, and now they're like best buddies. But sadly, Steve Irwin died, and it doesn't actually include it in this book. But I did some research, I watched some YouTube videos about and and um, I'm going to get about that at the end of the book review, but I'm going to inform you about the book right now because that's my job. This is a book review about Steve Irwin. And you might be wondering what this 100th title is. I don't really understand, but it says something on the back, and I'll get to that at the end of the book review. So, here, um, what, so there's this person called Wes Mannion, and Steve Irwin actually was actually met Wes Mannion because... West Mannion and Steve Irwin had a lot in common. They relocated crocodiles, they loved animals, and they even had a pet python, both of them. So it's crazy, just West Mannion was the, was his best buddy, was his best buddy. And, um, well, it doesn't really talk a lot about him, it's just one whole page of him, of, well, where they met, what, um, how old they were, and both of them were 14, so they were the same age. And so, um... He had this dog called, um, I believe, wait, let me find it. It's a dog, um, no, Sui, S-U-I. He helped Steve Irwin. And you're like, a dog can't just get tape wrapped around a crocodile's jaw. Well, abs well, like, obviously, a dog can't. The Sui, the dog can't. But what he did was, there's this thing called distraction. And Sui, what he basically did, he, uh, Steve Irwin would throw a uh, um, stick in the water, and Sui would chase it. Because, you know, almost every dog loves ch chasing sticks, even Dookie right here. So, um, Steve Irwin, while his, his dog Sui was, um, was, like, distracting the crocodile, Steve Irwin, well, he went from behind, taped the, jaw, taped the crocodile's jaw's mouth, and, um, well, they relocated, and you're like, but a regular dog, like, if the crocodile's fast enough, he could snatch the dog, Sui. Well, Sui was a really fast dog, and he, and, um, Steve Irwin actually trained Sui on how to swim really fast, on how to, like, like, dive underwater so the crocodile just couldn't catch him. I mean, Steve Irwin was just really prepared. So now we got all of that out of the way. Now I can talk about what's this 100th title and the not included death in this book because um, the timelines, they go up to, well, I'll, I'll just show you later, but it, um, Steve, so the 100th title, so on the back it says a big title with you choose it. In bookstores, classrooms, and libraries, our contest to pick the subject of the 100th who was. Title drew, the title drew 67,000 votes, and the winner, with 14,000 votes cast, is who was Steve Irwin? And I can understand how people could choose that. So, now it's not in the book, but actually, this is how he died. So, one day, um, he was by the great barrier steve steve irwin was on the great barrier barrier reef in september 4 2006 so you're like did he just get cut on coral reefs or something did like a wild puffer fish just stink him and he died of poison well no because he had like a crew of 10 crew members one filmer a bunch of paramedics a bunch of nurses well not really nurses but people who really knew a lot about health and and really the only person who was working was the film caster and um well brutally so there's these things called stingrays and i bet you heard of one of you heard what stingrays are but you might not know what they are so stingrays are well they're basically a ray and if you don't know what a ray is then you've been living in a rock you've been living under a rock for your whole entire life so Steve Irwin, so there's this thing called a stingray, and basically what's different from a ray is a ray just, it's like kind of movie plate or something, or you get what I'm talking about. 
but uh, sting rays they actually have a sting like they have a sting at the tail that's really stubborn and really long but so sadly Steve Irving gets stabbed to death and people say he got stabbed but by a hundred times but no he actually didn't he just got stabbed through his lungs but that's not even the worst part he also got stabbed through his heart and he was like he was in so much pain two people died brought him up to the yellow inflatable boat inflatable boat but that's not the actual main boat they just pull they just like targeted out to sea and just not like far away like 10 miles away from where they are just like maybe a few feet away from the they are so they could pull the yellow inflatable boat up and well help steve Irwin if he was injured and he was actually so he got stung by the stingray through his lungs and heart and if you hadn't already known uh if you got if you get stung by through the heart you're practically dead because your heart is like the main system of your body some may say the brain but also some may say the heart because those are the two most most like most popular and most needing to survive uh organs so sadly he got stung through the heart and um well he died so that's the sad story of who was steve Irwin. i mean it was a pretty happy story and basically well he just tried to help the wild he just tried to help nature mother nature and he was a pretty chill guy. He had an Australian accident and barely anyone cared about that. But he had a really famous TV show. It's called The Crocodile Hunter, I believe. And well, Steve Irwin, well, there's a, one of his daughters, uh, he, uh, the one that was born on July uh, 24th, 1998. Um, he had his first daughter and that daughter, when she was seven, uh, she... She and her mother, like, created their own TV show, and it's, like, something, something. That probably didn't help you guys, but, uh, sadly, I don't remember. But, um, they created their, uh, TV show, and sadly, they were somewhere else when Steve Irwin died, so it was just a pretty tragic story, but also a pretty happy story. So I hope you liked my book review. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications, and, um, there's a wild croc!